Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things tech and finance and in this video we're going to be going over a very basic strategy otherwise known as the Paris trading which falls under the mean reversion quantitative strategy. Do know that this video is just for educational purposes only and if you are going to be trading on the stock market do know that there's a ton of risk that is involved with this and make sure that you do your own research. I'm not a financial advisor. In pairs trading, a pair represents two different equities that are often traded throughout the entire world. And more often than not, they have a very, very high correlation value associated with each other. And the key assumption here in pairs trading is that the pair has a stationary value to which both of these equities will then converge to whenever they start to diverge. So the moment that your two equities start to then converge back to that stationary value, that is when you can then execute trades that are related to a long or a short position. And that is when you can start capitalizing on that given assumption of this particular model. So let's dig a little bit deeper into this Jupyter notebook that I conveniently created to help further our understanding on how to execute a pairs trading type algorithm. Okay, so this is a Jupyter notebook on a very high level overview as to what mean reversion or pairs trading actually is. So this is my artwork, uh, forgive my artwork, uh, but <laughs> it's a great visualization as to what pairs trading could then help maximize your given position. So assuming that we have a stationary value in which your two assets have a given value that they are you know, fluctuating around, if they were to diverge from this given stationary value, that is when you can then capitalize on that given spread, assuming that they're going to be converging back to that stationary value. Otherwise, you'd be losing a lot of money. And the terminology can be a little bit misleading as to what longing a pair is or shorting a pair is. Essentially, a long pair is that you want to long your, you know, long uh, stock A and then short stock B, and then vice versa for shorting that pair. So short stock A and long stock B. So you can think of it as like a parameter form. If you wanted to think of it like this, you're going to short the very first parameter and then long the second parameter. In this case, we're going to be shorting this given pair to maximize our potential position. So now that you have a very high level overview as to what the mean reversion or the pairs trading algorithm is, let's go in a little bit further as to what that basic idea represents. So first up, we want to actually find two different assets that move very similarly with each other. And whether or not the correlation value here is negative or positive doesn't really matter. What we really care about is the absolute value it, of that being close to one. And if you're you know, getting an absolute value of like one, for instance, of your correlation, then that's like a really good opportunity to potentially maximize your profits on. And over here, once you find the basic correlation value of you know, your given underlying pair, that is when you want to sell your overvalued stock or buy your undervalued stock. So what I mean by overvalued and undervalued, the, in this case, if we look at the visualization, the overvalued stock here is asset A and the undervalued asset is asset B. So we want to short asset A because it's overvalued and we want to go long on asset B since it is undervalued so that they're going back to that mean. That's one way to think about that here. And that is what I mean by overvalued and undervalued. Sure, it's very different from the fundamental analysis, but this is the technical analysis here. So if you're really interested in this sort of stuff, I highly recommend that you check out the Monte Carlo simulations for the ideal stock portfolio. I'm essentially running a bunch of simulations on the efficient frontier. So if you're really interested in, in that, you can click on this tag up here, or you can check out the link in the description. So over here, I wrote out a function uh, related to just getting historical data and I'm using all of these ticks over here or tickers as they are called. And this is just the tag at which a specific company is traded under. So we have like Netflix, S&P 500, we have GameStop, Nike, FireEye, Facebook, Berkshire Hathaway, Class B share, so on and so forth. And this is what the data that we are working with here. So next step we want to do is to, you know, find out the correlations, as I mentioned earlier, the diagonal is going to be one. And as we can see, it's pretty hard to see, you know, what numbers sort of stick out. So let's do a heat matrix over here. And this is what that heat matrix looks like. So if it's a very light color, you know, one, 
then that is what we want to check out. But you know, we don't want to find a relationship of itself because there'll always be one. So we want to find values that are very close to like 0 0.92, 0 0.91, etc. So over here, I went a little bit ahead and I already actually you know, found a relationship. So we have S&P and Berkshire Hathaway dash B. And let's see, S&P and Berkshire Hathaway B. So 0 0.97. That looks reasonably good, very close to one in terms of the correlation value. But as we can see here, this is the relationship of the two values over here. So there's actually not a lot of, I guess, spread. Well, there's actually a huge spread over here, but we can't really determine if there's a mean. So uh, there's a potential way to get around this in terms of massaging your data, but there's a better, I found a better a pair that we can utilize and that's Berkshire Hathaway B and that's Microsoft. As we can see, there is, you know, a lot more intersections if you want to call it that. And then th with this, there's more opportunity to go long or short on this particular asset class. So for throughout the entirety of this video, I'm going to be doing some more analysis on Berkshire Hathaway of class B and Microsoft here. And then take off the spread and this is what that looks like. It looks reasonably fine. Now let's see if there's any stationary involving in this particular assets relationship. And that is where you can do a variety of tests, uh, check out your co-integration um, test, which is very close to 5%, but essentially what co-integration is, it's a technique used to find, you know, right here, potential correlations in a time series over a very long period of time. What essentially you're trying to test for is to see if your series are non-stationary or stationary. In this case, we want our series to be stationary. Otherwise, if we have a non-stationary relationship, it becomes very hard to predict and model that particular relationship. So over here, the test actually sort of failed. Uh, but there are other tests, more popular tests, the AD Fuller, otherwise known as, I think it was like augmented Dickey Fuller test, which is another test for stationarity. Uh, ideally, you want all of your tests to pass, but if one of your tests has, you know, uh, if it does pass the idea that there is some stationary involved, just run away and go with it. And you probably will need more justification in industry, but you can go ahead and run with it on that. But Anyways, I essentially ran the AD Fuller test on the Berkshire Hathaway uh, stock, Microsoft, the spread, and the ratio over here. And notice that the individual relationships of the stocks are not stationary at all. So if we want to take a look at that, look at this. There's not really a mean involved here. If there was a mean, it would be probably be around like 220, maybe 230. And as we can see here, it's not reverting back. So that makes sense. However, if we will look at the spread here, you know, spread around, looks like around zero. If it was a average, uh, it looks like it's reverting back to it, you know, reverting back to the zero term. So yes, it does make sense. So two of our uh, cases here, in this case, I did not plot the ratio one, but this also passed the test of whether or not that particular relationship is stationary or not stationary. So over here, I went ahead and just plotted the the price ratio um, so we can have a better understanding as to what we are working with here. Let's zoom out a little bit. There we go, zoom out. Yeah, and then this is the relationship of what we are working with. So throughout the entirety, the rest of this video, I'll be working with the ratio between the Berkshire Hathaway stock and the Microsoft stock. It is very common in industry to actually execute the ratios. You can also do the spreads, but yeah, up to here, it's gonna be ratios. So now that we have somewhat of a understanding as to what relationships we want to use and what type of stationarity is involved here, in this case, the price ratio passed the ADF test in terms of stationarity, uh, we can then go on and create some statistical tests to determine when we actually want to sell or when we actually want to purchase this given pair over here. So there are several ways you can start doing this. However, probably the most statistical way the most in its most basic form is to execute some form of a z-score measurement. So what I did here was I essentially just calculated the given z-score of my ratio, the ratios that are plotted over here, and I went ahead and I plotted some bands. Uh, in this case, it's 1 and 1.25 and negative 1 and negative 1.25. These bands represent um, the z-score value that this particular z-score of our ratios actually represents. 
So in this case, assuming that the relationship that we have, since it's stationary, and so since it follows a normal distribution of our given relationship here, we are given some form of a probability that if a given point were to fall outside of our given band, so if it falls outside of our very first standard deviation of one, uh, then there is a 32% chance that that particular observation will fall outside that band. And if it falls even more and more and more, there's a higher and higher probability that that particular point will then slowly diverge to that given uh, stationary value. And that point, when it actually starts to converge, that is when you want to start executing your trades, whether it be a long or a short. Uh, and that will be at that point, or it could be at this point, that point, so on and so forth. So one way to do this, uh, one way that I did it, in order to try to calculate uh, when you actually want to start selling or purchasing the peaks and cusps of these relationships is that you can then utilize a machine learning model. You can do linear regression, logistic regression. There's a little bit more massaging of the data that is going to be needed in order to pinpoint these specific signals uh, that determines whether or not you want to trade. But in this case, I did something very, very similar. Well, actually very simple. In this case, I just did moving averages over here. So my predictions are pretty much based on the previous uh, five observations. Predict that sixth op observation using the moving average and then just roll it down through. And I did that for five days and 20 days and it looks something like this. So I'll be using these predictions, the orange line and the green line, in order to uh, calculate my prediction band, my type of interval. And that will help us determine whether or not our model is good or bad, if it's gonna lose us some money. <laughs> um, so over here, I just did very something very similar. You know, I calculated, actually up here, I calculated the Z-score um, utilizing the ratios of the moving average at the five, subtract that from moving average of the 20, and then standard deviation of the 20, get the z-score of that. I plotted the z-score over here, and then I plotted the additional bands that we have. So the red is the one and 1.25 of our given uh, relationship for our bands here, and we have negative one and negative 1.25 here. So whenever our uh, points were to fall inside this band, and especially outside of that band, uh, that is when we want to either buy or sell that given relationship. So I went ahead and I plotted the actual effects. Uh, so I created a buy and sell potential opportunity. If it falls outside of that given range or that realm of possibilities, then we're not gonna be plotting anything. So set that to zero. And then over here, I just set the access so that we are ignoring all those points that have a zero marker and we have a buy and sell signal over here. So this is essentially what pairs trading is. Given a signal and on this particular relationship, in this case, Berkshire to Microsoft, we want to determine whether or not we want to sell or to buy that given relationship since these relationships represents the convergence of stock A you know, going down or stock B going up. So you want to hit that point and maximize your profit there. But as we can see here, this relationship or like this entire model that I just uh, conjured up was uh, not very successful. So as you can see here, the sell signal is all red. I'm like selling, selling. So this is good. Selling, 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 right? But then gets over here, right? Sells, but then you have to sit a while, maybe like a week, at least a week in order to sort of uh, get back your gain. So there is a lot of finickiness relationships here. So you're buying, 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 and then whoop, you make some money and then sell, 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 sell. So like there is a lot of, I guess, like opportunity that's involved in here. If you really want to, you know, play around with the options contracts, those particular markets, uh, by all means, this is definitely a strategy you want to be familiar with. But it looks like this model is capturing, you know, you're buying here, you're buying here. It's capturing some of the relationships related to you know whether or not you want to purchase or sell. So if you like what you saw here, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications on because in the future I'll be doing a video on each of these topics, momentum, valuation, sentiment, seasonality, 
all related to the quantitative side of things that we don't normally see in the YouTube space.